Okay guys, here's the theory I promised you. So here's the thing, I tried to explain this pretty well in my video on Saturday. I don't think I completed it, I wanted to state it more clearly and in more of a way that makes sense here and now. I rewatched Matt Pat's video so like I have more information and I think I'm ready. So hold on to something because it's it's a little bit of mental gymnastics. I'm not talking Olympic, I'm just like talking national at this point. So one thing that I think I should start off with is Scott Lang's powers. Now, based off of what they tell us in the movie, in the first movie, he is using PIM particles which can shrink the distance between atoms. Because as you know, like for example, hydrogen is like 99.9999999999996% empty. And so by shrinking the space between those atoms, he can, you know, shrink his size. And then also that's how the reverse works. By spreading out the space between atoms, he can increase his size. That's kind of how it works. Now, there's a lot of other scientific parts to this that they take out of the movie or that they only include for a second. Like, for instance, the fact, let's say that Scott Lang is like a normal adult, weighs about 200 pounds, you know. Um, when he shrinks down to like the size of an ant, that he still weighs 200 pounds. It's much less changing his mass and he more can change his density, how tightly packed his molecules, you know, how tightly packed his atoms are to each other. So if he's like, let's say that he was just staying here, 200 pounds on this floor, you know, completely fine. Like it's built to support people. That's what it does. However, if it was 200 pounds on an ant size portion of this floor, he might be able to crack it. Now this is shown in the first movie when like he falls and like while he's small and he smashes onto the ground and like the ground is cracked. However, that's the only time that they ever pay attention to this fact. And by that same definition, you know, he can't be picked up. He can't be put into a pocket. He can't rest on someone's shoulder. He can't jump on someone's gun. Because although he may be more agile in this form, he is still 200 pounds of man. 200 pounds of man in your pocket, 200 pounds of man on your shoulder, 200 pounds of man stepping on your gun. And that's something that they constantly ignore. Like, it's a little bit annoying, but as long as we're ignoring science for that part, we're just going to assume that they're going to continue ignoring that science. However, I just want to bring it up that Marvel has another superhero who can control his density and you know he's doing pretty well i mean not nearly as famous as ant-man i guess but he's part of a comic book superhero team um they revamped it on november 1st 2017 adding the 63rd issue to the previous running series that came out in like the 1970s and actually now officially confirmed that marvel is attempting to make a movie about them that is going to be a spy kids you know sort of form movie which i think would be amazing and i might have to make a theory on or several because it was this team and Spider-Man that got me into comic books in the first place. If you haven't guessed by now, the specific team that I'm talking about is Power Pack. But enough about my rampant love of Power Pack and how I am so excited that they are finally getting their own movie. Let's go back to the actual theory that I'm supposed to be discussing with you guys. So now that we know that Scott Lang can change the space between his atoms to shrink down, Technically, we're, the, we're going to allow Marvel to ignore science again, okay? So as we see him do, both in the first movie and it's the main plot point of the second movie, shrinking down to a subatomic size to, you know, enter the quantum void. I'm just going to say this now. Technically impossible, based off of the definition that they're using. Because the definition that they use is that um, Scott Lang is shrinking the space between his atoms. 
not shrinking his atoms. And if his atoms don't shrink, he cannot get any smaller than atoms. Okay, since the only, because like, if he decreases all the distance between the atoms, he'll still be stuck at atom size. He can't go smaller than the atoms because he isn't shrinking the atoms. But like I said, as long as they're just, as long as they're consistent with their ignoring science, we'll be consistent in believing that they will continue to ignore science. And like I said, in Matt Pat's video about it, which was actually made in 2015, I don't know why I said last year. It was hard. I wasn't thinking. Clearly, Ant Man didn't come out in 2017. I'm just, I'm just dumb. Okay, but yeah. So he made that three years ago, and in it he explained how such a small, you know object, such a small thing with such a great amount of mass, because remember he's still 200 pounds, would create a black hole. Not just a small black hole, it would create a black hole that could literally suck up the entire earth. Thanos, based on what I could see, he was looking at a sunset at the end of the last movie, was he not? And there didn't seem to be anyone else around there, was there? So let's say, hypothetically, that the Avengers could locate where he was and tank Scott Lang with them, Ant-Man, and secretly, you know, get close enough so that Ant-Man can shrink down. Remember, he could start out small, so it's pretty easy to stuff. And he shrinks small enough to go into the quantum void, and if Marvel uses science this time, he could essentially create a black hole right next to Thanos on a deserted-ish planet so it would hurt no one or very little to no one and at the same time defeat Thanos. However, I am also anticipating that since the singularities, the Infinity Stones, were there before the world, before the universe was created, that something as simple as a black hole can't destroy them. So they could take out Thanos without destroying their only chance of bringing everyone else back. But you might be thinking, oh wow Glenn, that would be really great if anyone knew where Ant-Man was because he's kind of stuck in the quantum void and his team is gone. That's where the next part of my theory comes in. I believe that Cassie knows exactly where Ant-Man is. Because Scott and his daughter Cassie have always had a very close relationship. She knows that he's Ant-Man. She's stated multiple times that she wants to help him to be his partner. Whatever. And in the Ant-Man movie, we never see Cassie be disintegrated. Also, just a little side note. Now, um, the Avengers have a new army if they do bring Ant-Man back because none of the ants got disintegrated because they're not people and they can literally make thousands of ants big and it's essentially creating a new Wakandan army. I'm, I'm just saying, that, that that's just an interesting plot point that I realized, which with everyone said that the second extra credit, the second in credit scene was just for fun, and I was like, just for fun? No, no. Nice try. That literally just proved that they have another whole army at their disposal. That's not just for fun. If they don't use the ants as an army in the next Avengers movie, why? But I believe that Cassie knew where her father went, and when he doesn't come back, and you know, all the chaos of everyone disappearing, she will run away and search for him. And she will find out, she'll find him, will find like the void and everything, maybe even find the communicator, because as we saw, like it's like a walkie-talkie-ish communicator, so we could still hear it even though he was down there, and it wasn't like a special earpiece, like we could hear him yelling from it. So Cassie will end up being able to free her father, like all the technology is still there, they literally just need to press the right button. Let me stress this again, okay, this is no special intricate sort of thing. All someone needs to do is press the right button to bring Ant-Man back. And then from there they're going to contact the rest of the Avengers. 
or you know the rest of the Avengers that are left. Now here is where I think that the whole part of Doctor Strange keeping Tony Stark alive is important. Okay, it's going to be a combination between Tony, Bruce, and Shuri. And all three of them, along with Scott, clearly, but he's not really that smart, along with Scott, will all combine together to figure out a way, because since they ignored the fact that Ant-Man can create black holes, they can't just say, oh, by the way, he can. I think that those three, specifically Tony Stark, but that those three inventor geniuses will come up with a way to allow Ant-Man to create some massive destructive force while shrinking down. So that way they won, even though they ignore the science, it's not like they ignore the science and then they're deciding, oh, science is helpful. Two, it shows why Tony Stark needs to be kept alive because maybe he comes up with the final piece or like the key or like, you know, no one else would have thought of the specific thing that he thought of. And then they can attach that to Ant-Man, have him shrink down, destructive force activate it. Now clearly, this isn't the greatest theory. Clearly there are holes in this theory. Clearly there are things that could go wrong. However, it does make sense. Let me just run through again really quick, okay? Ant-Man scientifically possesses the ability to create a black hole if shrinking down small enough, even though Marvel has ignored it thus far. Ant-Man is not in a perilous state. Okay, he the wife lived down there for 30 years. Okay, so he's not in immediate danger. Okay. Cassie has always known a lot about Ant-Man and what he's doing, and it would make sense that Ant-Man Scott would tell his daughter Cassie where they were going. In all the chaos, she'll look around, she'll find him. Okay, it is not hard to bring him back. She literally needs to press the right button. That is it. She needs to press the right button, which we could assume that Scott might know how to do because he might have been paying attention once when Hope or Hank was using it, so we might possibly know which button he should press. Okay, once Cassie brings him back, they can go find the Avengers together, or maybe Cassie doesn't even need to be there to find the Avengers. Ant-Man finds the Avengers, or what's left of them, and through a combination of Tony Stark, Bruce Banner, and Shuri, they find a way to attach a device, or like they modify a suit, they make some sort of weird adjustment that explains why black holes weren't created before to allow a black hole-like thing to be created now. They find Thanos, and they use such a device on him, taking him out, but since the singularities were there before the universe, they could most likely survive a black hole or some destructive force without damage allowing them to reclaim those jewels and bring the rest of their team, the rest of the universe, back. Okay, that's just my theory, that's my idea, you know, I think it makes a lot of sense. Maybe not the best theory ever, but still, it makes a lot of sense. So yeah guys, that was a really long theory, I've been talking for a while, I hope you understood it, I tried to make it as clear and concise as possible. If you like this theory, don't forget to actually like it and subscribe down below because like I said guys, this is Wow Too Much Glenn. You are currently watching the fourth technical episode of Wow Too Much Glenn and you know, you gotta subscribe for more of that. Comment down below, does my theory make sense? Is there any like faults that you can find in my theory? Is there any alternative routes that you think that they're gonna go? There has been rumors of them casting old, casting an older Cassie, so maybe like Avengers 4 is going to be sort of a time jump thing. I don't know. I mean, that could work too. I just really liked my theory. Don't forget to share this to anyone who you know they're looking for a way that Avengers 4 could happen. They're looking for a good plot, because that would make a good idea for like, you know, a plot of a movie. I like it. At least some way. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a good mini part, good mini part of the plot. Uh, all my social media is right here. You guys know that. And I think that's all on you guys, so let's have some fun and smile, because Cassie's going to get to be the hero that she's always wanted to. I just want to bring it up that Marvel has another superhero who can control his density, and 
you know, he's doing pretty well. I mean, not nearly as famous as Ant-Man, I guess, but he's part of a comic book superhero team. Um, they revamped it on November 1st, 2017, adding the 63rd issue, the previous running series that came out in like the 1970s, and actually now officially confirmed that Marvel is attempting to make a movie about them that is going to be a Spy Kids, you know, sort of form movie, which I think would be amazing, and I might have to make a theory on, or several, because it was this team and Spider-Man that got me into comic books in the first place.